Oh, he's on there. Oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, giant. Here we go. Here he goes. Oh, my gosh. Ugh. <laughs> Golly, guys, this is so great. This place is just so ridiculous. I figured there would be a really big one down there. You can't tell me he didn't want the Strike King football jig, guys. Look how he has it right there. Just engulfed it. Whoo. There we go. YouTube, what's up? Back again for another daily fishing video here on Andrew Upshaw Fishing. Guys, today we're going to talk about a bait that just does not get the credit that it deserves anymore out deep. And it's still an absolute staple in my tackle box. There's no doubt about it. I still use it when I'm in deep water, no questions asked. Also, I wanted to really clarify something for you. So, you didn't see a video other than the fantasy video last week. And the reason you're not seeing videos during those particular weeks is because of elite events or Bass Pro Tour. I know the Bass Pro Tour is still going on at Watts Bar, but the elite just wrapped up at Pickwick, and I just didn't want to overlap my videos on top of it. I feel like a lot of my crowd is that tournament crowd, so I just didn't really want to oversaturate it too much. So today we're going to be talking about a very special bait that has caught me a lot of bass. But real fast, if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, make sure you do that. Bottom right hand corner is how you can do it. It's a little red square. Just hit that button. It makes my life way, way easier. So, guys, we're going to dive right on into this and we're going to talk about a bait that doesn't get its credit anymore. Now, a football jig. Now, I know we're all going to say, well, I, I still throw a football jig, but do you really? Is it the number one bait that you throw? Is it still that bait that it was before? I'm going to argue that it's not. You just don't see guys going out there day in and day out throwing a football jig like you used to. And that's okay. You know, there's a lot of great baits out there. There's big worms, shaky heads, drop shots, Nico rigs, just to name a few. But I'm telling you guys, a football jig still is, in my opinion, one of the very best ways to catch a really big bag of fish. Now, we're going to talk about a couple different aspects of the football jig what makes it special and still how you can utilize it today and there's actually two variations of jigs that i throw when i'm out in deep water especially during the summertime and that's what we're talking about today is how to catch those fish in the summertime on a jig a football style jig so i have two different jigs that i like to throw i've got a structure jig and a football jig and some would say man i just throw the structure jig or i just throw the football jig but in reality, I throw both of them, and I'll tell you why. So, when you open up the structure jig, the number one thing you're going to see on the structure jig is it has a pointed head, and it has a flat line tie. So, the way this particular head is, it still has that football shape. It still has that, that wide shape, but it's more pointed. Now, when you open up a Strike King football jig, you're gonna see the traditional style football jig. You're gonna see it have just a true football shape. So when you compare the two, they look somewhat similar, but they act totally different. Now they have different hooks. This one, the, the structure jig has a little bit larger hook, whereas the football jig a little bit, uh, a smaller gauge wire, but still really, really strong. But let's talk about when to use each one because there really is different situations where I use each one. So I'll first talk about the football jig, the standard half ounce to three quarter ounce football jig. When I'm using the half ounce three, three quarter ounce football jig is when I'm either A, in open water, B, around standing timber, or C, around rock or clay, a hard bottom. I've always had a lot of luck with a football jig around those conditions and it tends to work extremely well. This is your standard football jig here. Just rigged. I just actually just got off the lake with it. And it's been chewed up. And they still, <laughs> I mean, it's like they hadn't ever even seen it before. That's how these fish are acting on it right now. But this is your standard football jig. So 
like I said, whenever I'm around wood, rock, clay, hard bottom, standing timber, that's what I go with. Now, what we've noticed over the years is, and I'm saying a long, you know, really long time, is fish really like to relate to brush piles. I'm going to tell you flat out, that football jig does not work in brush piles very good. You're going to get snagged up. Uh, you're, you're just not going to be able to fish it effectively. That's why you see guys go to a worm. You know, a 10-inch worm, shaky head drop shots, things like that, because they can fish them in and around that brush without snagging up. Well, that's where I turn to the structure jig. The structure jig gives you the ability to fish around that type of cover without snagging up as much. And I, and I honestly, I implore you to try it yourself. Go out there with your favorite half ounce or three quarter ounce football jig, throw it around brush pile. I promise you within the first couple of casts, you're gonna get snagged. That's just what it is. Like it, it's not built for fishing brush piles. Now go in there and throw the exact same structure jig that I'm talking about here. The, the Strike King structure jig, half ounce, you're not going to get snagged as much. Will you get snagged? Absolutely. I mean, like, I, I can't tell you how many times I've thrown a 10-inch worm in a brush pile on a 3 8 ounce weight, and it gets to the bottom, and it's snagged as soon as it gets down there. And it, that's just how it goes sometimes. But that structure jig's going to give you the ability to fish it in and around cover way easier. So that is my, my brush pile uh, jig. But it's also, if I'm fishing the outside edge of deep hydrilla, deeper grass mossy bottom something like that it slides in and around grass even easier and that's when i turn to this particular jig as well so i kind of keep it as a two-pronged approach my football jig box is loaded with this type of jig and this type of jig for both situations now that's whenever i'm fishing open water you know i'm fishing a football jig and that's what i've been fishing recently uh, because I have been fishing more open water situations where I'm fishing uh, timber, uh, hard places between, you know, stumps and, and things like that. I'm not really fishing brush. I actually don't really get to fishing brush much until I hit probably July, August, around that time frame. When those schools start to bust up, when fishing gets a little bit tougher because so many people are out there, they tend to go to those brush piles even more during that time. Now, when it comes to trailers and trailer options... There's a couple different ones that I use. Um, obviously, my number one, and this has become my number one for sure, is just a rage crawl. Uh, just a standard size rage crawl. And the one thing that I do, and I've done forever, is I change the color of my trailer to not match the color of my skirt. So, now granted, this one's pretty similar. This is like a pumpkin skirt with a green pumpkin blue trailer so it's a little bit darker trailer than the actual skirt color and that's just something that i do sometimes but like say for instance i throw a black and blue jig i'll put a either blue sapphire trailer or even a green pumpkin trailer something that's completely contrasting to what i'm already throwing and that tends to get the job done as well so the rage crawl obviously is a big one here's a couple of different ones i, I carry you know quite a few different rage crawls from june bug black neon Green Pumpkin Blue, uh, Okeechobee Crawl is another great one because it gives you that two-color approach. Watermelon Red, Sapphire Blue, and then obviously Black and Blue. But having a good selection of, of trailer colors will help you throughout the day. Now, the other trailer that I throw, and I tend to throw this on places where there's big fish. And I mean, like, you are gonna got a chance to catch like a seven or eight pounder. I'm going to throw the, the Magnum game hog and i'm gonna thread this on there full size just like that and you know, honestly it just catches big ones i started doing this at kentucky lake i mean 10 plus years ago and i know those guys have been doing it forever out there but it definitely makes a huge difference when you're throwing a jig and quite frankly it's just what i turn to when it when i'm trying to get a big bite you know uh what i will say you know the the biggest fish i've ever caught in my life was caught on a football jig it weighed right under 12 pounds. It's 11.97, uh, and I actually had it in my live well all day long. Caught it at 7 a.m. We weighed in at 3 o'clock. Was it a 12 pounder? Probably, but like the whole moral of the story is, I caught one 12 pounder on it. The biggest fish I've caught other than that is like a nine pounder. Uh, I catch. It seems like my average when it comes to a football jig is better. You know, I catch a lot of that five to seven pound range fish but really getting over that eight to nine pound range is kind of been difficult for me in the years past 
and I don't really know why. I, I think, you know, it's a big fish bait, but for whatever reason, that jig just catches better than average fish. And if I'm on a bite where, let's say, for instance, I'm catching them on big worm every cast, and and maybe I'm catching a three pounder or four pounder, three pounder, two pounder, and then I pick up that football jig nine times out of ten before it even hits the bottom, I'll catch one. And sometimes it's that three or four pounder, but sometimes it's a seven or eight pounder. And that is what makes this bait so special. And that's what I want to talk to you about a couple of things that make it so special. So I fish a half ounce football jig 95% of the time. I don't throw a three quarter very often. Now, if you go watch anybody else's YouTube channel, you listen to other pros, they're talking about three quarter ounce jig, that's what they use. I come from a different time. Um, I learned from, in my opinion, one of the best football jig fishermen there's ever been, and that's Ben Matsubu. And rarely do you ever see him throw a three quarter ounce or a one ounce jig. We do that on like an Amistad, a deep, clear reservoir. But nine times out of 10, we're throwing a half ounce, a five eighth ounce football jig. And it has everything to do with fall rate. You know, everybody is so convinced in their mind. They're like, I got to throw my jig out there. And it's got to get to the bottom as fast as it can so I can start dragging it. Well, that's not necessarily the case. A lot of times, especially on a body of water that isn't just straight mud, when that jig's falling through there, they can see it coming down there. And if they see it, and it's falling slow right in front of them. Now, I'm not saying terribly slow. you got to still have a little bit of speed to it. But it's falling down through there. It looks super natural in the water. And those fish will eat it on the drop. I can't tell you how many of the biggest fish that I've caught on a football jig ate the jig on the initial drop of the bait. And that is a very big key because anybody's out there throwing a three-quarter ounce. I mean, I've caught some on a three-quarter ounce on the drop, but most of the fish I catch on the drop is on a half-ounce jig. And I think that's what makes it so good. So there's a couple different thing, a couple different rods that I fish my jig on. You know, lately I've been using it on a 7.4 heavy. Uh, this is just a Pro TI rod. You want a heavy action rod. Now, on a place like Toledo Bend, Sam Rayburn, Gunnersville, I'm throwing like 20 to 25 pound test, and I think that's a really important aspect of this. I'm not throwing light line, just not. Uh, I don't think you need it. You know, when you get around a fish that wants to eat, he's going to eat it. And that jig, it actually, that bigger line slows the fall just a little bit more. And I like that aspect of it. A 7.5 to 1 gear ratio reel is really important. The other rod that I throw it on, and I tend to throw this if I am having to throw a little bit lighter line, like 17. 17 is about as light as I go on a football jig, just being honest. Like, when I hook a really big one, the last thing I want to be worrying about is, man, like, this, this 10 or 12 pound line just ain't gonna get it done. Like, I, am I gonna land this fish? Like, it gives you anxiety. But I don't have that anxiety with a football jig because I don't put myself in the situation to have the anxiety. Uh, but 17 pound line, 7.2 heavy action. This is just a jig worm rod. And a 7.5 to one gear ratio over real too. Really important to have that heavy action, especially in deep water. Now, can you get away with a little lighter action rod in shallower water? Sure. Uh, but that jig is definitely one of those baits that I want to have a heavier action rod. Uh, the hook set, though, that is another important aspect of the football jig, especially out deep, is I'll fill the fish and then I'm sweeping to the side. Uh, for whatever reason, I've always had a lot of success sweeping sweeping my, uh, my football jig kind of like a Carolina rig. I tend to catch them better, uh, get them in the corner of the mouth. It's like the perfect place. And... That's just the way I've done it for years, and it's worked for me. But you have to figure out what's going to work for you out there. But more importantly than anything, don't be afraid to tie on a football jig, structure jig. Go out there and try it out. Because I'm telling you guys, guys do not throw a jig as much as they used to, and it still catches really big bass. Recent trip on Toledo Bend, absolutely destroyed them on a football jig. And it was my cleanup hitter. It was my go-to when those fish fired up and I caught some big ones on it. I hope y'all get a chance to go out there and try it this summer because I'm telling you, you could catch a really big bass on that jig. And I plan on catching a lot more big bass this summer on it as well. So guys, I hope y'all have enjoyed this show today. Hope you learned how to catch them on a football jig, give you a little confidence in that structure jig and football jig, and to kind of give you a different point of view on when to fish each one. I hope to see y'all in the next episode, which will be tomorrow. So make sure y'all stay tuned for that. And I'll see you on the next one.